so I am going to pull up. Just, we should visualize where we're going. Oh, have you? Oh, what? But that's in Manchester. What? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's your job. You, you do that after, after this. I'm going to Barcelona. That's where one lucky person from this room, I hope, will be going. So Barcelona, who, who here has been to Barcelona? Yeah, it's about half of you. Anybody doesn't like it? Nobody. See, nobody does. Nobody uh, hates it. So the, the Moodle office, if you're interested, is somewhere in the middle. And uh, we are right there, right in the middle of the whole thing. And um, that's all the place, that's a bunch of places I've been to. <sighs> all right, let's, let's go to Barcelona. What we're going to do is we're going to go to here. Um, a lot of you were here last year. You're familiar with this process. What we're going to end up with at the end is a prioritised wish list of what this group wants to see in Moodle, or MoodleNet, or MEC, or Moodle Workplace, or many other things under the Christmas tree. Um, maybe it's something new that doesn't exist yet. Moodle should make a. That would be a good one too. So anything you can think of. Uh, we're going to go around and uh, I'm going to divide the room into left and right. So if I could have a runner on each side. Yep. And to speed this up, I'm going to alternate, and I want the runners to actually pick the next person on your side, so that you're ready with a microphone on the next person, and we can we don't have to say who's next and all of that. Five tables, so not with me. Uh, it's which line? Which probably yeah, down this down this canyon here. Okay. Yeah, okay. Let's check it out. <laughs> Uh, and I will need a volunteer later on, but not just at this moment. So, um, the, after that we're going to have a vote, and you're all going to get five votes each. You have to use up your five votes, uh, and spend them on whatever things you think, and whatever gets the most votes is the winner, and we'll rank them down from there. This is an abbreviated process of what happens at the Moodle Users Association, actually, and if you want to do this kind of thing all year round, join the Moodle Users Association on the session right after this one. Talk to um, Aurelie over there. I have a question. Yes. So you said earlier that this might not just be Moodle Core. Is this is all Moodle platform? Anything. Any Moodle thing. Including it's all Moodle. one big platform. Moodle so, Net, yeah. MEC. Absolutely. Okay. All of those things. No holes barred, right? Um, <laughs> if you want to. Uh, yeah, okay, well. Um, let's go. Who's first? Who's got yeah. one? <laughs> so Bob, start finding somebody, and all right, Michael, what's the idea? You got a couple. You got a minute to make a pitch. A minute. Um, I would really like to see, actually, in the line with the Moodle education certificate, something to certify Moodle developers, knowing the Moodle architecture, being able to be more than just hacking against the core, which are phrase used by yourself, and to be able to demonstrate that they understand what they're building when they are building for Moodle. <laughs> and, you know, contributing that uh, ecosystem and things like that. I've got another one I've been asking for the last three years as well, but, you know, I'm not going to ask again. <laughs> All right. Certification of core developers, would that be enough? <laughs> Just like a, a Moodle developers, yeah. Yep. Okay. Great. Love it. That's a good start. Um, pretty clear, I think. I don't need to talk about that. Who's sec? Who's second? Yes. Um, for Moodle Core, uh, to improve enrolments. So, for instance, um, being able to set a, a global enrolment key for a course category would be useful. Oh, okay. And, uh, so, set, I'm going to try and write this like a tracker issue. Um, so, usually have some verbs in there, like, so, uh, um, so add a uh, an enrolment key at category level. Yes. And that could be activated for all new courses within there. So once you own this enrollment key, you can log into any course one by one, or you log into the category and then you get into everything. 
So you, lo you want them to give it once, and then they have access to a whole bunch of courses. OK. And if anybody feels that it's unclear, they don't get what's going on, feel free to go uh, explain more or something. OK, who's next? Oh, sorry, we're over here. Yep. Mark. Um, and prove. Oh, didn't start? Okay. Oh, we've got three runners. OK, let's alternate between the three. OK, just everyone grab your nearest runner. Um, yes. OK, there's growing evidence that I'm seeing of students not bothering to read the feedback they get on assignments and simply looking, what's my mark? Right. Um, so my proposal is a change to the workflow for marking of assignments to allow the option where you need to view your feedback, make a very brief text response to it, for my next assignment to improve, I will, or whatever it is you want to set it to be. Um, and only after you've done that, and that's been stored, can you actually see what mark you got. OK. That was clear to me. I've just summarised that it's forcing students to see assignment feedback before grades. Uh, well, to... Uh, that's right. I mean, the assignment feedback might not be writing, it could be a video or something, but you just, you want them to acknowledge it. The, I don't want to go into too much detail of the implementation, but the end result is you know they've seen the feedback. Um, I'm going to put C again. Because they might be blind. So C is, I just mean observe, have received the feedback. Okay, who's next? Dean. Marco. Yes. Oh, over here. Uh, improved grading interface in uh, core Moodle uh, because we in DCU alone last year we printed off the students printed off two million pages um, in terms of submitting assignments and getting hard copy uh, feedback on it if you can improve it you will save a small fortune and get more people using Moodle so improve the grading interface yes so the PDF annotator that's there ah, improve that. okay for Annotating assignments. Is that enough? Covers it? You have to wait for uh, Can you actually, no, no, that's not enough. Improve it how? <laughs> this is to, otherwise we're going to have, oh, improve the forums, improve this. How, how do you want to improve it? So um, merge um, the advanced grading features, the, the, the rubrics and the marking guides, merge them into one, have the uh, library comments actually instead of as one big list, have them specific for each criteria, um, have two rubrics within the one, I can give you a full list, uh, have two rubrics within an assignment where you can actually mark um, for the content, but maybe a second rubric that is just general feedback that no grade is attached to that rubric. I remember we had a really good workshop on this at the Dublin Moot. Mm, I'm still waiting. Yeah, <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, it's there. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, I acquired this microphone just before three was said. Luckily, I have a second one. Oh, okay. Uh, and that is uh, with assignment, if a, a student uh, does, say, a report followed by an essay, followed by uh, some other project, and then on their next course they get another report assignment, it would be, be really nice if you could link those two assignments together so they can see the feedback from the first report so that when they do the report the second time round, they've seen that feedback. Uh, it's more obvious to them. Can you summarise that better? Yeah. Uh, better feedback linking from previous assignments. So view, view feedback for previous assignments or something um, in, in the current one. Is it within one course or across courses? Course. I thought you said across courses. Across courses. So what's the relevance of my physics assignment so to my chemistry assignment? So, when, so when, uh, when your chemistry teacher is telling um, this student that they really need to focus on writing their numbers with the correct units, they can see whether the physics teacher had to give the same feedback. And oh, I'll, you mean for the teachers to well, see Well, both it. for the teacher and the student, make ah. it easier to... It's, again, it's relating to do students use the feedback. Again, it's for the student. When you come to work on this assignment, well, what did my teacher pick me up on last time that I should try and get right this time? Uh, so easier access to feedback on previous assignments when you're looking at this assignment. I like 
does anyone want to second that? Easier access to previous feedback in well, in any assessment? Okay. <laughs> I didn't, I couldn't understand that, I'm sorry, I couldn't quite hear it, uh, but I'm just going to put, hang on, my feedback? Yeah, like, oh jeez, so if, um, if, if the tutor or the student took the kind of top three things to take away from the feedback, that way the next tutor wouldn't have to read all the feedback, they'd just see, oh, Stephanie was struggling with her references, and now she's doing it okay. well. I'm sure GDPR is going to pop its head in here at some point, but uh, okay, thanks for your uh, additions to that idea, but if it wins, uh, it's going to this gentleman here. <laughs> okay. Um, Juan. So uh, mine is really simple. When you're adding a topic heading, to automatically be able to click something that adds that as a category in the grade book. So within a course, oh. you've got your topic heading. Yeah. So unit 302, animal science, tick that, stick that as a category in the grade book. That's a pretty good one, actually. <laughs> I've thought that myself many times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, here. Um, a Moodle form, so like your Google Forms or Microsoft Forms, um, um, whether it's a change to your existing plugin like assignment, database, or feedback, um, but something that where learners can answer questions and also attach documents. And is, is that not the database module? No, because then it doesn't go to an individual marker or viewer or teacher. It, what was that? Sorry. It, so it needs it, to be submitted more like a feedback, but where you can attach uh, a document as well, and then you could have a workflow for feedback loop or resubmission. So it's, it's a blend between an assignment and feedback. So it's a form. Okay. Sounds more like Moodle database form. module to me. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. It is, but it is without. The, the, one of the key things is that it's not visible by all the participants. It's not collaborative activity. So you want form entries plus a file. Yeah. And then you want a... Which you can do in database, but only... Basically, we, we do it at the moment by hacking things, like by using database or feedback and or using yep. several things to submit. But having a form like, you know, your Google form, basically, um, would be useful. Uh, the idea is to use... I, I still want to know like... what comes after the form, because that is database. Database is for making forms that you fill out. And then the then data... it goes to a teacher. So let's say you've yeah. got a student submitting an ethics proposal for their dissertation. Uh -huh. They fill all the questions, the answers, the yep. attached additional documents. It goes to a supervisor who either approves, pass it. So then you could have a workflow, basically. Oh, uh, pass okay. it on to, to, um, to, um, to someone else or just approve, or they can send back to resubmit. So it's form submission. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm trying to summarize this now. So some sort of a... Forms Moodle forms. There you go. With workflow. Well, I mean, Moodle is all forms. Like every single plugin is forms. So all of Moodle is forms already, and all the plugins implement particular workflows through Can forms. Can I just ask Oli? Do you mean like because um, we use Google Forms a lot? Is it just? Do you mean like in, we'd use that instead of a Google Form? I don't think it's Google captured. Forms can do what you just said. You can't do workplace. You can't do workflows. <laughs> Hmm. Okay. Uh, well, I perhaps database. <laughs> okay. I think yeah, there might be a few ways of doing this sort of kind of thing. Okay. Uh, moving on to Bob's pick. I'm going to start. Dan. Okay, so imagine the scenario. <clears throat> You're a new teacher, or you've just set up Moodle Cloud, or you may even be an existing teacher, and your uh, faculty asks you to create a new course. Uh, so they, they build the course for you, or they create at least, or install a course, but then you have to go through all the settings. 
And that can be a world, a, conf a confusing and complicated world. So my proposal is that to create a new course, you follow a course wizard. Okay. And the wizard will ask you various questions. So it's not filling in fields, it's being asked content. What is the name of your course? Describe your course in a few sentences. That becomes the course summary. Do you have a pitch you'd like to associate with your course? That becomes the summary image. Uh, how many weeks is your course, or how many topics is your course? Do you plan to have assignments? So a step-by-step -step guide that when they click done, the course is structured and built for them. It's a big ask, but I think it would be amazing to empower uh, anyone to build a Moodle course. It's true, though. Nice. If you want, if you could give students... I'm with him. Yep. You could give students the, yep. um, the rights to build courses, and yep. th that kind of wizard guide could be an amazing incentive. That's it. There's some, uh, this has been tossed around in the community for many years. Uh, there, I think there could be something in there about having course templates as well. So if the institution set up particular templates and you ended up choosing one of those templates and then customising it or something, it could all be in the wizard. But anyway, I'm just going to put a course creation wizard with step-by-step -step forms, um, probably customisable. Uh, right there. Yeah. That, just, that was mine. That just was mine. That's um, mine. Uh, who is next? Juan's yeah. Jasmine. Started up. Hi. Um, when you're using the book resource, <clears throat> it would be really handy if you could add activities into that. Because at the moment, if you want to link to activities, you've got to put them into a hidden section and just link. But it would be nice if you could add activities straight in to the book resource pages. Oh, I'm having trouble with the Glaswegian. <laughs> um, so I've book, lost my voice the book resource well. and you want to hide a... No, so when, when you're creating a book resource and if you want to add an activity into a chapter, at the moment you have to link to the oh. activity in a hidden section. But okay. it would be nice if you could add the activities straight in to the book resource chapters. So you want to put activities into the book. Into a resource. I know it's mixing it up a bit, but yep. yeah. Do yeah. you want, in fact, there to be a book-based course format? Yes. Would that be a way of putting it? Would that be sufficient? Yes. Okay. But, oh, but no, because I like using the grid format in the course and behind each grid having a book resource. So I would like to put the activity straight into the book. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Someone else can suggest the other one. I'm already going to Barcelona. <laughs> um, ability to uh, insert activities into a book. We already heard uh, how you can now do quiz questions in a book, so that's cool. Um, Doug's next. Yes. Hi. So um, this is one that I kind of feel like it's always should be there already, but it's not. And if it is, please, please tell me. Um, so we use groups, a lot of multiple groups in one course. So we like the group functionality a lot. But in Q&A forums, we can't do it. And glossaries don't have group functionality either. So it's just making sure that group functionality works across all of our activities. Oh, you can't do groups on Q&A forums. No, you have to turn it off because it just it just stops uh, working. Um, okay. And same with with glossaries. I just assumed it would just be there, and it, and it's not. Um, so yeah, ev on everything, okay. group functionality on everything, please. <laughs> yeah, totally agree. I mean, it was always supposed to be there. You know, a lot of what I did in Moodle was like, uh, you know, I leave the the rest is an exercise for the reader. Uh, and then just never got there. Um, Bob, I think, is next. Where's the microphone? Oh, what? Okay. Yep. Hello, Go ahead. Martin. Hey. Uh, you know what? I like to find the moo in Moodle. Yeah. The moo? Mod the moo. Yeah. Modular object oriented. Yeah. So what I'd like to see and probably is going to solve a lot of other people's problems is actually to be able to have exportable resources and activities on that level. Mm. So you can export, import, merge, uh, design, whatever you like, 
with the activities and they're probably their predefined data or configuration as they are, for example, in an existing, uh, say, course. So that's like a backup? A tiny backup, imagine. Yes. That can be used to be exported in an XML format, whatever you love. Yep. And then imported as pick and mix for anything else you like. And this can be used also to the training of the whatever you said for the teams. So backup and restore literally does exactly that. Tiny uh, little things. Only. You can also, yeah, you, in the backup, you, when you're doing the backup, you can say, I only wanted these things. And when you do the restore, you can say, I only want these things. And you can do exactly this. Mm -hmm. And when we, when we hook it up to MoodleNet, it gets very exciting for mm -hmm. the sharing. Just to make it a little bit more understandable than that. Uh, OK, yeah, uh, the interface can be improved, shall we say that? OK. Um, hey, who's editing? Stop editing my document. Get out of there. <laughs> Um, oh, hoop, oh, sharing cart plugin is another way of doing it. That is true. Um, but I'm just going to say improve interface the sharing cart is not for um, sharing, moving. I think this one came up last year, actually. Cut and paste. Um, one or more activities. Between courses or sites. Was that big enough? Yeah? Uh, yeah, courses and sites. So between courses and between sites. Yep. Pretty sure they did come up last year. Who's next? Uh, who's, who's the next, per, next picker? You already handed your microphone, I think. Bob, you already handed this microphone to over here. So yeah. who's next? Juan. Yeah, it's Juan's turn. Yeah. Hi. Um, I actually have four things on my wish list. <laughs> you have to pick one. I'm sorry. It's one. Pick the best one. Oh. We all have 100, actually. OK. The easiest, maybe. Duplicate sections. What's that? Sorry? To duplicate sections. Topics. Duplicate sessions. Sections. Yeah. See, she's going for. Yeah, yeah, we have it. Uh, Martin, we showed that, and we have it already. On your presentation? Yeah, yeah. Yes, but we're talking it's about core. Quick. We're talking about core. We can, it's not on core. No, oh. no. This is about what should be. Uh, so there is an implementation over in Israel of this uh, a proof of concept. Duplicate sections. You've gone short and sweet. It could make it to the top. Who knows? I, I have others. Uh, like... No, so I'm sorry. We've got to, we've got to give everyone a bit of a chance here. Let me check the time. How are we going? Oh, oh we've got, we got time. We've still got, we're going good. All right. Uh, who is the next person? Yours, your pick. Yes. Asa. So we are having such a hard time uh, onboarding teachers because they open Moodle and it's so many options and they'll get lost. So what we thought about is a simplified role for onboarding teachers, which is different simplified UI UX, much lesser options. I can, as a manager, can choose only the things that are essential for onboarding, not overwhelm them with the thousands of options. And what they get a little bit better, I can go them and, and make them a usual teacher. But focus on onboarding so I can bring them on board. It is quite possible to create this yourself no. just by making a new role and configuring it, but you want something out of the box. Yeah, no, I, I get that, but like anybody here with Moodle can create that through the interface. You don't need to, and there's no coding necessary. It will not simplify the experience. It would uh, allow and disallow many things, but to have it very minimalized. For for uh, okay. specific one. All right. So a simplified, uh, let's say, standard for onboarding of new users. Yeah, that explains it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Based on capabilities, so you, yeah, I, I can't see core settings. I can only see the wizard, that kind of thing. Yep. 
makes sense. Wow, this is good. I often have to, we have to have a lot longer conversations to nail the exact uh, definition, but we're going pretty well so far here. It's because you're all so sophisticated. Uh, who's next? Yeah. Hi, yes, yeah, so accessibility is a, is a hot topic at the moment. When adding an image, you have the option to say description's not necessary. Yep. I was wondering if we could make it so it's now compulsory. Oh, that's a simple one. Um, well, you know that's there because it's there to make experience better for people who are using it. You realize that. Like if you're blind and a teacher has put in a, a bunch of bullet point graphics and now it's going to say bullet point graphic, blah, 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 every time. It actually is worse than just reading the list. But, you know, it's, that's why it's there. But you have to make that judgment. Um, but I'll, I'll put it in there. Compulsory descriptions for images in text. Juan. Uh, hi. Um, I think about a uh, quick continue. It's quite simple. A uh, teacher asks about simple. The last page he was, he can mark, and the next time he log in, he uh, can give the presentation. Right. He directly can run uh, yeah, his, his course. Resume. Yeah, sort of resume. Where you left Moodle. Um. Yeah, in a new session. Yeah. I think I've, that's not the best description, but it'll do. You understand what I mean? Okay. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. That's uh, been. That's probably not even hard at all. Okay. I get back to my quadrant. <laughs> yeah. So Mary's pointed out we now have uh, recently accessed activities as a block in the dashboard. So it goes some way towards it. But I get what you mean. You, by default, if you log into Moodle and you're straight back where you left off, that would be a feature. Sure. Um, Bob's pick next, I think. That, which, that was just mine. Oh, I'm back oh my... man, you're really wandering around. It's confused. I'm back in my car. Okay, right Doug. Now. Hi. Yes. I'm just going to call you Doug and Bob and Juan. Yeah. I'm Bob as well, so that's confusing. Oh. <laughs> uh, in Europe, we have new accessibility regulations that apply to public sector websites, including VLEs. What, I what I'd like to propose is that we have an accessibility checker for any space on Moodle where we can input text or images. So it's difference number 14. It would be more like the Microsoft Office accessibility checker but it would apply to spaces like labels, Moodle pages, anywhere where you can input content. Yes, good, good one. Full accessibility checker for all Moodle content. Uh, this exists. There is prior art. There is a product. There's multiple products. Um, something more open would be nice, for sure. Not in core, no. You'd have to go to Blackboard and buy their thing. Um, but. I, I agree. That's something that should, given how the, its importance and, in fact, legality, it should actually be something that's just standard. <laughs> oh, there's a trip to there's a trip in it. Um, I'm I'm not sure that's. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, do you want to withdraw that and swap it for another one, or um, it's. Yeah, leave it come out in the vote. We'll split votes over it. I know where you're coming from, but um, yeah, I think there's a very particular thing in mind there. <sighs> Who's next? That was Doug. So I've lost track of the order now. It's a problem with three. Who's got a microphone in their hand? Okay, Mark. Um, mine, I asked last year, so I'm going to ask it again. Section level context. Section level context. Because with section yes. level context, you can allow students to edit individual sections on a course, and you can lock down so only teachers can edit certain sections. But I appreciate that would be one hell of a rewrite. I don't think it is. I really don't think it is. I think it's relatively simple. 
Okay. I think Tim's going to do it this weekend. <laughs> uh, gosh, my spelling. And I'm in England and everything. Okay. Um, oh, someone's hacking the thing again here. Um, what's who's next? Don't look. Don't don't hold your hand up to me. Hold your hand up to a runner. I need you. To, need people with microphones. Yes, Juan. Hello. Um, I'm a huge fan of fan of the Moodle quiz. Um, I'm working with the digital exams in our university. Um, one of the things that we're handing over quite a lot of the administration side of the Moodle quizzes now and setting up digital exams to staff themselves, to the academics. And they're really, really struggling with the question bank, especially the categories, pages. And, and I just wondered if maybe um, there's a way to have a rethink about the interface on the question bank, making it much more intuitive. I really liked some of the, I know that there are loads of plugins that we might be able to introduce, but it would be really nice to get some of that into core. Um, can to, you can you be a little bit more uh, detailed, just a little bit, about yeah. what 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 sort of things you mean by intuitive? I think it's to do with the way that everything, for instance, on the categories uh, tab, everything is listed as uh, sort of almost in a bullet point list. Um, it's it's not very clearly differentiated. Um, you have indentations, and then you have you know the, the kind of like a is it the tree structure. It would just be nice if there were other ways of, of almost using, I don't know, some kind of block uh, method or something or other colours or something, something that makes it stand out a bit better so that people get a much better overview. There are a lot of defaults, the way our Moodle uh, quizzes are set up, there are a lot of defaults for course level, uh, category level, etc. So it's just kind of getting rid of some of that that they don't desperately need to be able to see. Um, that might be useful for us who've got administrator access, but for for the tutors, for the academics, mm. it really is a bit of a mind-boggling thing to get them used to using and moving between the, the questions tab and the categories tab as well. Yep. So I'm just thinking if there are ways of making that a bit s slicker, easier for our academics to work with. Search as well? Search would be fantastic, absolutely. Yep. <laughs> yep. That would be brilliant. Um, yeah, maybe okay. some some automatic uh, file naming or question uh, naming as well. Could if I mean I'm just thinking now out loud, which I probably shouldn't do. But yeah, there are loads and loads of potential in in. We we have in, ta we have the, the tagging is now showing now, right? It's working. Okay, so that's. So I might just need to explore that. Yeah. We have tagging yeah. now. Yeah. Yes. Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, Doug. Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Sorry if this has been asked before, um, but I think it would be really useful for assignments to uh, enable to have more than one round for marking and blind marking to work for all these multiple rounds of marking. I know that a lot of UK universities have this requirement uh, and a lot of universities already have either a workaround or have developed their own um, way around it, but it would be really nice if it would be part of Core Moodle to have this feature. And I mean, you can have multiple rounds of marking and give feedback each time and then go back and change the grade. So yes, you want a record would, of all the grades? Yes, exactly, because for right. uh, UK universities, it's almost a requirement to enable double marking and blind marking. Um, so yeah, just a way to have it there in record, all of these multiple rounds of marking. Um, and if it could be, yes, like a core feature, it would be great. All right, Thank super, you. cool, good one. Um, I think we've got time for three more. Oh, so... Be very nice to your local microphone holder. Yes, Hello sir. There. I'd like to see subtopics inside topics so we can have another level of hierarchy. So rather than just have a course and a topic, and that's it. Yep. That you can go down another level and okay. have a subtopic and then be able to group resources within a subtopic and maybe move them around and duplicate them. Um, do you just want that in the topics format or would you want it across, say, in weeks? Do you want subtopics in weeks? As well, uh, I don't care about weeks. I only care about. That's topics. a pro that's a programmer answer. But sorry, did you say yes or no? Uh, I don't care. 
You don't care? Sub, okay. subtopics. So, yeah, 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 I see. That's Programmers would say subsections. Is that what we're saying? Subsections that the course format can implement. Okay. Yes, what's it called? There's one called Flexible Flex Sections, which does this. No, right, that's true. So that's a good point. Not, mo not mobile friendly. So getting into core, implementing it properly is what you're saying. Uh, right. It's, it's a course format, is it? Yeah, it's a whole course format. That's right. So it's, um, so it's something you want to be part of the structure of the course, then you can switch formats at will and no problem. Okay, that's one. We've got two more to go. Catch 22. Uh, Juan was next, I think. Oh, Doug, sorry, yes. Okay. Doug and then Juan. It's fine. It's Shall I just go? <laughs> um, hi. Uh, we get feedback from some of our students. Uh, um, they want to post a question on the forums, but um, they think it's a silly question and their peers may, um, might, might think it's silly. Um, so I was wondering if it's possible to, to a degree, anonymize the post, but to be visible by the teacher of who's posting it and also for it to be moderated so that um, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't post straight away. Can't you do this? Anonymous? Oh, no, that never got into core. That, was, that work was done, actually, uh, by ah. Andrew Nichols. Um, so is it first time plugin that was anonymized for Right, a third party plugin can do it, I'm hearing. So, um, well, Third party plugins are fine. Probably a lot of these have third party plugins. We're just talking about obviously the whole review and integrating it and everything. So, okay, so you want to have anonymous uh, forums with detailed permissions. E.g., teacher can see them, etc. Uh, there's a there's a lot of work was done on this by Moodle HQ, and it was going to go into a release, and we didn't get finished in time, and then it never then it kind of got forgotten, and it was because it's quite uh, a snake pit once you get into it, like who can see who and when, and like there are some cases when you do want students to be truly anonymous, even from the teacher, like if it's a course about you know, some therapy or something. So, um, yeah. Okay. Anonymous forums is the what we we're calling it. And it wasn't only forums, actually. It was uh, right across all activities. Last one. Who has the microphone down there? Yes, sir. Uh, this is one for school administrators. Um, we've had a request for the ability to have activity pickers, but one that selects their category level template for for that activity so something that's not like pre-configured um you don't they don't have to go through all the different configurations for that activity before it's dropped into it so Ooh. they'd literally just drag and drop it onto their course area activity uh configuration templates per category is that that's uh that's an interesting one too all right. Now, at this point of the proceedings, I will require a beautiful assistant, male or female, or otherwise identified as short or tall, to join me on stage to help me with the counting process. Um, I would ask Doug or Bob or Juan, but I see them plenty already. So let's get someone new. Who wants to volunteer? I need a counter, someone to help count. We're going to counting heads. It's very easy. Didn't you come last time? You did. Oh, come on, we've got to give someone else a go, Dimitri, come on. I remember last year we did this, that's right. No, come on, someone else, come on, come on, Tim. Oh, come on, Tim. Come on, Tim. <laughs> Let's do it. It's always amusing when someone with a degree in maths can't actually count. Ah, it's perfect. It's perfect. Well, there's a really bright light there, that's going to help. Yeah. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do, you've got five votes in each. You are trusted uh, to keep it to five. And I'm just going to go through them all very briefly so we understand uh, what they are. We've got certification of Moodle developers at an enrollment key at category level. Uh, someone's highlighting these. I'm not sure who that is. Uh, forcing students to see assignment feedback before grades. Improving the grading interface. Well, anyway, I think you can see them all here. 
Um, you, were, you were all here a moment ago, you saw them. So, certification of Moodle developers. Should we put time into building a certification for Moodle developers? How many hands have we got? <laughs> you have to start estimating. <laughs> it's going to be like group theory. Uh, 65. What? I had 35. <laughs> See, and, and that's why we do this. Uh, sorry, and then I'll have to do, have a recount. That's very big. Uh, we can't average that. So sorry. I think hands were going up yeah. during the process. All right, hands up, stay up. Yeah. I'm going to go with a PhD on this one. 65? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Please, can people be decisive? Get your hand in the air and keep it still, please. <laughs> All right. Uh, adding an enrollment key at category level. So you rock up to your Moodle site, you've logged in, and you're putting your key somewhere on a category, and it gives you immediate access to the entire hotel of courses. What do we got? Hands up. Seventeen? Eighteen, I was going to say. Pretty good. Pretty good. Um, forcing students to see assignment feedback before they get their grades. Hmm. That's also about so 65, 70 level. I said 70. Here we go. 70. It will go with 70. Uh, improve the grading interface for annotating assignments with advanced grading comment library. This kind of better grading right there. Can we just say 100? <laughs> you can if you want. I, I, well, I was going to say 70. Okay. Let's go for 75. <laughs> no good. Uh, easier direct access to the previous feedback in an assessment. Uh, to be clarified, this is for the students and also potentially for teachers. Oh, I had 40. Uh, come on, let's do it one more time. Sorry, I'm sorry. There's, 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 it's a bit more critical this time because we've got something writing on it. Uh, 34? Yeah, I said 30. Let's do 32. Yeah. Okay. Automatically convert topic headings to gradebook categories. Presumably, there's an option, obviously. What do you got? Don't look. Oh, I was no. at 16. I was, I've got to sort of 20, 22. I see. You should, that's why you shouldn't look at mine before you say it. I always make it 20. That's good. Uh, forms with workflow for approvals. Perhaps database. I felt this wasn't as clear as it could have been, perhaps. One, two, three. Some three people understood what you're what you meant. Uh, let me see three. Sorry, Aurelie. Um, three. <coughs> yeah, that's right. Yes. There's always another way. Uh, course creation wizard with step by step. Forms, customizable. Oh, oh, Dan smiling there. <laughs> oh, that's over 100, I would say. I was going to say. Oh, that side, that side. Yeah, I was going to say 90. 
Yeah. Yeah? You agree with that? I was got halfway and doubled it and then saw this side of the blade. Oh, no, you can't do that. No, no, no. My way is I, I kind of, I get ten people under my hand uh, yeah. each time. <laughs> uh, that's why I'm doing a lot of this. I'm not trying to hypnotise you or something. Choose this question. Um, the ability to insert activities into a book. Is that 80? I said 60. 70. Go for 70. <laughs> I guess it's long. What's the one winning so far? Oh, wow. That one. Okay. I guess as long as it's not higher than that one, it's not too crucial. Uh, finish the group's implementation on every module. So full... Full group support. Yeah, that's what we want. We want a little bit of, like, you know, fight for it. Fight for it. 15. And that's why we haven't finished it. <laughs> 20? I was a bit low. 20 would be. Okay. Uh, improve the interface for sharing, moving one or more activities between courses and sites. So it's easier shifting of things around. I'm not going to get into the tech details. Ooh. Forty-five? Yeah, I was going to say 50. So I'll put 47. Thank you for giving me that one. Uh, duplicate section, oh sorry, duplicating sections. Uh, the ability to take to click and duplicate a whole section is a matter of course. Five or six? I got five. Um, a simplified standard teacher role for onboarders. So you got someone new. Ah, oh, you're an onboarder right now, and you're going to see a different interface that guides you into the process. Any hands? Three down there. Yeah. <laughs> Once at it? Okay. Four. Six. Five. Six. Okay. Great. Compulsory descriptions for images in text. Well, you have to. Come on. You have to. You have. You was it two? Three? Uh, th someone, th someone thirding that one? Yeah, yeah, Where, someone in here? Okay, all right. Um, can you say thirding? You can say seconding, but you can't say thirding. Why is that? English. Um, so, resume where you left Moodle in the next session. You just log back in and boop, it's where you left it. Thirty-one, thirty-two. I was going to say thirty-five. 35 Let's yeah. settle on thirty-three. Um, a full accessibility checker for all Moodle content. Yeah, it's a strong one. Wow. Oh. <laughs> we might have to have a recount. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I mean. Yeah. I think mean, that's kind of 100, but I wouldn't like I, to say any accuracy. For me, it felt like 90, which is why I was worried. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll we'll have a replay. We'll have a recount if we need it. <laughs> I was waiting for something like that. Um. Yeah, well, if there's a tie, we'll let everybody vote on the tie ones. I think that's that's fair. Uh, section level contexts for section level contexts. So we've got currently we have site, category, courses, activities, blocks. These are contexts in Moodle. Uh, proposal is to have the section recognised as a context between courses and activities. I think that's nine. Nine. I'll go with that. And that's why it hasn't been done yet. 
It, it totally makes sense, Mark. Seriously, it makes good logical computer science sense. Yeah, good. Um, Send the patch. Get someone at Cambridge. <laughs> someone at Cambridge will do it. Um, a better overview interface, browse and search for large question databases categories. You, you're allowed to vote. Sure. You haven't been voting so far, have you? Yes, I've done three. Oh. Seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Spot on. Same as me. We're getting better at it. That's why. We're we're tending. Um, multiple rounds of marking for assignments. Have you done more than five? Dimitri, maybe? Are you keeping track of your five? Everyone? Yeah, okay, good. Just checking. Uh, I always notice you because you're first for me, right? I'm always like, yep. Yep, 40. That's right. Subsections. So, some notion that there is. We'll need a context for that too, Mark. We'll need uh, subsection context. Um, so, subsections. Anyone's voting for it? Kind of 1920. 20. Yep. Two more to go. Um, anonymous forums with detailed permissions. So, for example, you might allow teachers to see the real names or other people with the capabilities to see real names, but it enables anonymous discussion. Why 12? 12, I'll go with 12. Okay. And last but not least, activity configuration templates per category. So you're adding a, uh, you're in a course, you're adding an activity, and it comes in pre-configured because some admins set it up for you. Sixteen? Eighteen? Let's settle on seventeen. Yeah. Okay. We have two that are equal first. And we this could, we, rather than having to count, we could do this sort of English parliamentary people voting for one go over that side of the room, people voting for the other go the other side. Then we might be able to eyeball it. You reckon? That's going to be a big disruption. Well, all, this, all, the, get... all the people checking their mail yeah, right now. Everyone's about to go to another room. <clears throat> no, no, we. Whoever it's for, they're going to get up. How? Maybe people stand up for this one. Yeah. Okay. No, uh, you got to stand for it. I think. Let's try standing. Let's see. Go. <laughs> well, um, there's one person in a wheelchair, I think. Yes. Two. Okay, I've only seen one, I'm sorry. Um, okay, where are they? Are they visible? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, well, I still think it makes sense as long as we're making sure that they're, everyone's heard, right? You know what? Put them on the side. Sorry, where, where are people in wheelchairs? Can I? Okay, hello. Which one do you want to vote for out of, let's see, Course Creation Wizard? Okay. So we've got one for that, and and, accessibility and the accessibility checker. Yeah. Where's the other person? Uh, is she here? I saw her before. Okay. All right. So uh, if you want to see the accessibility checker win this one, please stand up. Uh, sorry, the other option is the course creation wizard for a teacher coming into a new course and they get like a wizard that takes them through forms. That's the other one. This one is the accessibility checker. I had seventy five. 
What did you have? Well, 107. 107. Okay, I've got to do that again. <laughs> I would expect more than 90. You'd expect more than 90. Wow. Right, I'll have to do it again. We have to do this again. Sorry, we had a big, a big margin of error here. Maybe, how, does anyone else want to come and help? Do you want to come and help count? We need a third kind of as well. Let's have four. This is this crucial. All right. Uh, uh, we're not voting. No, we're not voting. Okay, so let's let's do this. Ninety-five that time. All right, so we're going we're to average. We're going to average the four. Oh, 95. What were you, Martin? Uh, I had 94. So we had, uh, what did you say? 95, 100, 100. I got 104. And 104. Okay. We'll average them later. Okay. All right. Everyone, we're gonna, everyone sit down. Thank you. And everyone who hasn't stood up yet, please stand up. No, no, no. If you. What? Oh, well, UK, you're allowed to abstain, I suppose. If you want to vote for. What is it? Remind them. Uh, this is the course creation wizard. Uh, so everyone who wants to vote for that, but you, you, if you've already voted, you already stood, you can't do it again. So keep standing up. Keep standing up. I think it's 52. I mean, it's clear the other one won. <laughs> yep. I had like 42, well, 42, <laughs> 45, 38. Okay. Sorry, Dan. Um, so clearly the accessibility checker has won. <laughs> who, who proposed that? <laughs> Sir, would you like to go to Barcelona? I would. All right. <laughs> Done deal. All right, thank you. Well, thank you, everybody, for being part of that. Uh, I'll tidy this up. I'll post it on Twitter. Um, I need to get your details, and we'll make sure that's all, all good. Uh, of course, you're all welcome to come to Barcelona for the global moot and maybe open EdTech. And um, thank you. And I'm pretty much done for the day, so I'm looking forward to the party. But we have a session for the MUA right here. Stay here. And, well, Doug's